This determines whether we actually fly or not. And that's wonderful news going in that direction. We don't want to go to Hartis because I don't think you ladies want to swim. Uh, no. <laughs> Maybe if it was a bit warmer, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the balloon we're flying this morning is uh, Cameron 415. They are 415,000 cubic feet in volume. And what we're doing now is we're just doing a quick pre-flight inspection to make sure everything is okay. Um, at the top of the balloon, you can see up there that there's a, there's a parachute vent, a big circle, just making sure it's all being put in place properly by my crew. We're just checking it. Making sure that there's no lines tangled or anything like that. And that's looking good. We anchor the basket to the, to the vehicle. The aim being if the wind was to pick up, it's an anchor point, the balloon doesn't blow away. Okay. It's early and it's a freezing two degrees Celsius outside. And while most South Africa is still asleep, we're out here chasing the sunrise in a way you've probably never experienced it. It smells like coffee and propane and that can only mean one thing, balloon day! This is where the forecast becomes real, only a balloon, a burner and a wind. And what better place to do it than with Bill Harrop's original balloon safaris, South Africa's most iconic ballooning company. With over four decades of experience, they've been offering unforgettable journeys above the Mahalis River Valley since 1981. From luxury launches to their famous champagne breakfast, this is ballooning at its best. So quite often we get away with flying here, even when the forecasts aren't ideal for the area, but that's based on the fact that it's sheltered um, in some cases. In other cases, easterly and westerly winds there's no shelter from. Danke, danke, danke. Oh, that's his compartment. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, as you Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> One of the things I can do, however, is I can actually rotate the balloon using lines. There's two lines here. Um, and if I pull either one on the equator of the balloon, there's a spinning vent. So it opens up the vent, very simple, sends out a jet of hot air, and that rotates the basket in either direction. And it's not because we steer doing that, it does nothing, we just change the view. But the, important, <laughs> <laughs> the importance of it is that it's a long rectangular basket, and we need to land in a specific direction. For technical reasons, that's the downwind side for the landing. We will be going that way because I can rotate until we're facing that way. Hi everybody, I'm Dion Javier. I'm a pilot for Bill Harrop's original balloon safaris. I've been flying uh, for 21 years. Bill Harrop, the original uh, owner of Bill Harrop original balloon safaris, uh, was my examiner and, and he let me go solo 21 years ago. And I've been flying back for, for the company for the last year and enjoying it uh, immensely. Why is sunrise the golden hour for balloon flight? That first hour or two after sunrise, the conditions are the most stable. Once the sun comes up, it starts to heat the ground unevenly and it starts leading to thermic conditions. And where we, where we might say that we can't steer a balloon, it is problematic if you get caught in a thermal updraft because then you have totally uncontrolled flight um, because you're not only unable to control direction, but you're not controlling up and down either. So that first hour or two is when it's the most stable and that's most likely to stay consistent.
family gathering for a week and then they, the three of them fly back for two weeks. So that's the way to do it. What goes into deciding it's safe to fly? Because it feels quite calm this morning and I don't know, that's not always the case. So we spend a lot of time checking forecasting systems. Between the pilots, we probably use about four or five different models that we look at to try and get an idea of what the wind is going to do because that's the first factor that we have to look at is wind. Um, so we try and determine if the wind is going to be particularly quick um, and more, uh, more especially what it's going to be when we're coming in to land. Um, other than that, we're looking out for in the summer thunderstorms. The uh, legislation means that we're not allowed to fly within 50 kilometers of a thunderstorm. So that, that would yeah. immediately put a stop to any flying if we had an idea that there was a thunderstorm. Mist and fog are things that we would try and see a forecast for. And if we can get all of that sorted out, then we can actually go ahead and try and actually get a flight together and we meet on the launch site. And that's where we'll make the final call on whether we're going to fly or not. The love and the lies, the calm and the chaos, adventure is waiting, dreams for the taking, it's all. We really can't steer. Wait a minute. Did he just say he can't steer the balloon? Then how does he fly it? Let's break it down for you. We've all heard the pilot uses a burner, which is basically a huge flame to heat up the inside of the balloon. And we know hot air rises because it's lighter than cold air. So when the air inside the balloon gets hotter than the air outside, the balloon becomes lighter and it will start to lift off. But here's the catch. Once the balloon is in the air, the pilot can't steer it to the left and right like an aeroplane. Instead, they have to move up and down through different layers of the atmosphere. As you can see in the animation here, different layers of the atmosphere has different wind speeds and directions. So we will move to the right in a lower level of the atmosphere. And as soon as we reach a higher altitude, we will change direction and start moving to the left. And then when the pilot wants to go down, they just turn off the burner and the air inside will start to cool down again. So the balloon will slowly but surely start to sink. Well, back to the video. As much as we try and tell people that we do have some control, we really do go where the wind takes us. Would you say winter mornings are better or worse for flying? I don't particularly love winter mornings, but it's perfect for ballooning. The colder the temperatures are, the more likely there is to be an inversion layer that protects us when we land and it'll stay consistent for the longest. It also means that the separation of those layers will stay consistent for longer as well. And then from an operator perspective, um, the fuel usage in the balloons is way lower in winter than it is in summer because the lift we get in the balloon is the difference between the internal envelope temperature and the ambient temperature. So the colder it is outside, the less you have to heat the air inside to get the same amount of lift. Eric, you can head to Saguati, please. Saguati. Saguati. I don't have a fixed plan yet. Um, and the
Um, but the whole story goes to, to the beginnings of ballooning in the 1780s. Um, as we pointed out earlier, the first were a duck and a goat and a chicken that flew in a balloon. They flew to 1,500 feet and then crash landed about two miles down the road apparently and survived it. Um, and then they asked the King of France, please, they need to send a person up. And one of the Montgolfier brothers would have liked to have been one of those people. And he said no. And then after a bit of persuasion, he said to them, they can take a prisoner because prisoners are expendable. <laughs> so you can take a prisoner and send him up. So they sent a prisoner up. But um, folklore has it that um, they sent him up with a bottle of champagne so that wherever he landed, he could identify himself as French, because they weren't sure how far he would fly. <laughs> Cheers, safe landings wherever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. Cheers. There's something remarkable in letting the wind guide you. No rush, no traffic, just trust in the journey. We work with weather data every day, but today we saw the atmosphere isn't just numbers, it's an experience. Until next time, may your skies be calm and may you find wonder beyond the forecast. No rush, no traffic. But today we saw it's not just numbers, it's an experience. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sam. So, any bye? Any goodbye? Okay. <laughs> Let's see a gust. Yo, Marate is a joke, Niva. Okay, she's right. Till next time, my use. Amper, Amper. <laughs>